here's a brief but annoying message to let you know that you could have first heard this episode nine months ago if you were a subscriber to our Iron Filing Society Patreon offering. For the price of a pint and a St. Clements each month, you can get up to four episodes a week, nine months before the rest of the world gets them. Early access to regular episodes, lots of other marvellous benefits, and there's absolutely no adverts or brief but annoying messages like this that will get right on your ticks. Find out more and subscribe now at tftimemachine.com slash ironfilings. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it! This is Tough Like Time Machine, I am on the hot body Dawson, pow, pow, pow! I'm Sam Nifty Delaney, so what? Welcome along, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's nearly Christmas, if you're listening to this on the uh, free version, nine months later. It's three months till Christmas, so it's near enough. <laughs> And it's the time when we look at the Ripley's Believe It or Not book, the new one every year. I have in my right hand the all-new, it says here, Ripley's Believe It or Not, 2023. It's got a very uh, enticing orange and purple swirly ball. Oh, it's amazing. It looks like a, a... It looks exactly like a rave flyer from, like, the early 90s. But Do you did I mean last like year some not have one of those, those visual effect things where it looks different depending on where you look at it, yeah. which angle yeah, you look did. at it from? But that's very expensive they've, to produce. So the, yeah, they thought exactly. back this year they're looking at their margins, going, "Oh, we got, a, we can't be doing that last year. It was a gamble. It was a gamble, mm. and it didn't pay off. In fact, it almost cost us money. It was like factory if records." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that blue Monday twelve inch. Yeah, if it wasn't for those those cuds doing them podcasts about it to promote it, we wouldn't have it turned a profit fucked. at all. Yeah, I so fucking have. Anyway, I tell you what, the I hope they're going to do it again this year. They've done it last couple, haven't they? Well, how can we be sure? Maybe we should call them now because then they'll want a stake in it. <laughs> they'll want a free copy. <laughs> Send them a couple of free ones. No, I'm telling you, it's not worth it. If you let them know that we're interested, then they'll start toying with us. I've been down this road before. Because uh, I, anyway, I, think- I used to publish the Guinness Book of Records. And when Roy Castle and Norris McWhorter started doing a TV show of it, right, suddenly they wanted in on some of the fucking proceeds of the book sales because they said they were the ones driving it. And the hell I had with those pair of cunts, I can tell you. They talk about the Cray Twins. They were fucking nothing in comparison to fucking Castle and McWhorter. They are a fucking nightmare. And this D- Dawson and Delaney pair, they remind me of them. So just, kids, leave well alone. Yeah. Hey, anyway, I don't think they'll do it this year because they seem to be bored with it last year. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be fucking, I don't know why they're bringing it back. I would be completely surprised if they brought it back. Last year, they were really struggling for content. They're probably just doing it, I like, because it's just a lazy option. They couldn't think of anything else to do this Christmas. i tell you what, the first year we did it, there was loads of good stuff. But then the next mm. couple of years, I feel as if, well, either, to my mind, the editorial content has declined. And I'm not surprised because it's fucking hard. Like, in the Mm. days of the internet, right, back when we were kids, and believe it or not, it would be easy because you hadn't been exposed to as much wild shit because you just lived in your Mm. house and just saw what was going on around you. So you saw some wild shit, but not that much. Now we all see wild shit every day. So the whole kind of do you believe it or not, it's like there's almost, mate, there's hardly anything I wouldn't believe these days. <clears throat> Do you know I what I mean? As well, they could also just make it up back then as well because no, it was verifiable. It, exactly. So it now it, it, it's very hard. I don't know who does the actual content in this, but whether it's a team of them or what. But I think it, it's very difficult to research, and I feel as if it's I. I can't work out where it is between the editorial content not being as good or us just becoming more and more blasé about pretty mad shit mm. because we've got we own so many of these books now, don't we? Yeah, so what we, we've do. become a bit um, hardened to, to this amazing stuff inside. We're like, oh, yeah. See, um, I'm on page um, 46, right? And there's a cow with, with a third eye. And yeah. that's obviously it's a cow. And not just any old third eye. It's like a fucking big eye right slap bang on the center of its head, right? That's mm. incredible. And yeah, when I saw it, I thought, mm, I was f- flicking through thinking, what can I find that me and Andy might have some fun discussing and examining. Mm. And I, I I didn't, I feel like a couple of years ago when we first started doing this, I'd have been, whoa, I can't with the third eye. Oh my God. <laughs> Whereas now I'm like, oh yeah, cad with a third eye, is it? Yeah, that's a possible. Uh, next. Might talk about that <laughs> if we're desperate. <laughs> 
the the headline's yeah. quite good. It's Heard I, and it says a right, calf yeah. in Wales had everything had everyone seeing triple after they noticed it was born with a third eye directly in the middle of its fucking forehead. They don't say fucking, but I can see that's what they're trying to imply. Yeah. Uh, veterinarian Malian Hughes was conducting a tuberculosis test on the baby bovine, then four months old, when she noticed the... Eh, what's this? Oh, I'm like, eh, I'm just going to te- text you quickly for the old tuberculosis. Here, hang about, what's that on your nut? The calf oh. appeared healthy, with Malian... Malian noticing that third eye seems functional, although misplaced. It has eyelids and eyelashes, and it even <clears throat> secretes lubricant, keeping mm. it moist. However, it is not known whether the calf can use it for sight. How could you well, know? Just, how so could you know? You don't know. The what's... other eyes up, and then ask it how many fingers you're holding. Oh up. yeah, of course. Yeah, you're right. You know. I was about to say it's impossible to test, but that's the obvious way to well, test it. Of course, it's not. I mean, I. I'm, I still haven't finished with the cover yet. I'm looking at the back and oh. it says uh, it gives us some indications of what we might expect inside. And it says, first of all, at the top, it says £22. Nobody has ever paid £22 no. for Ripley's Believe It or Not. I paid eight. That's a bullshit price. Um, you either pay eight to £10 online or in a supermarket or you'll get it uh, remaindered in March for about £3 probably <laughs> no one's ever paid £22 if you have paid £22 you, you're fucking fucked up um, it says mummies paraded through city sounds good artist paints with cow poop second mention of a cow already mm. flying cars become reality we're going big Wa- big on cows this year get this waterfall disappears overnight <sighs> believe it or not and then it just says normal is just an illusion so a bit of a nod to imagination in there. 1980s hit just an illusion there. You asked who is involved in this. Vice President is Amanda Joyner. Creative Content Manager is Sabrina Seek. Editor, Jordi R. Orlando. What a Ooh, name. I'd love what to have him name. on the show. Text is Jeff Tibbles, who is someone I've heard of. He does a lot of um, freelance writing. About football, I think he writes Who? a lot about What's his name? Tibbles. Jeff Tibbles. Great name. Like, Love him. Like Tiddles, but Tibbles. Yeah. Uh, feature contributors, Engrid Barnett and also Geordie R. Orlando again. Mm. So he's the editor uh, f- and he ch- chucks and bits of work in as well. Yeah. yeah. Proofreaders, Rachel Paul and Yvette Chin. Uh, fact checker and indexer, Yvette Chin. Uh, special thanks to Tacita Barrera, Yanisi Contreras, John Cocoran, Steph Distazio, Barbara Forat, Colton Cruz, Matt Mamula, Julia Molman, and Curtis Molman. The Molmans there joining in. Well, There's Hans uh, Molman out of the like um, Simpsons, isn't there? People. Hans Molman's yeah. the little old man. He is. He'd be, they must be his kids. Mm. Uh, One of my favourite sundry people. characters, as it happens. There's a bit at the beginning where it tells you all about uh, Robert Ripley. Um, born in 1890, grew up in the hills of Santa Rosa, California. An energetic but shy kid. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Shyness is a curse, mate. Shyness is a curse, but shyness I don't associate with energeticness. Yeah, it's strangely shyness energetic kind of but also away. shy. Mind yeah. you, there's been some... Who's the shyest footballer ever? Uh, I don't know. Who's that one who went to live in a caravan? Marco Boogers. Marco Boogers. Maybe him? David Batty's quite shy in a way, isn't he? Oh, fuck yeah, of course. Has not been seen anywhere. I am David Batty, retired. and I am quite shy. So <laughs> please bear that in mind when communicating with me. <laughs> Excuse me, are you are you David Batty? You used to play for Leeds in Newcastle in England. No, I am not. David Batty has retired from public life. <laughs> I am not he. My name is... Please um, move away. Um, David Datty. <laughs> <laughs> My name is uh, Tony Lonely. I'm a very lonely man, and I'm just going home now after picking up some carrots Tony at the lonely. Tesco Metro. <laughs> Please retreat. Uh, energetic but shy. Mocked for his large front teeth and stutter. He no. found an escape in the form of drawing. Um, 
and uh, blah blah blah. On a slow day, news day in 1918, Ripley gathered nine out of the ordinary athletic feats and put them all together in a cartoon panel he called Champs and Chumps. <laughs> Readers loved it. He returned to the concept and retitled it Believe It or Not. Right. And that's where we are now. Well, but it's actually a wonderful story, isn't it? Because you sort of think, here's this guy. Well, irrespective of his backstory, but as it happens, it makes it extra nice that he, you know, was an uncomfortable, shy youth. He was teased by other people, right? Mm. And that's sad. But he made... I mean, we often applaud ourselves, or not applaud ourselves, but... We feel grateful for the fact that we make a living out of talking shit like this right now, right? Yeah. And we think, what a fun way to what a fun way to spend your time, right? And turn into a kind of a job in a way. But look at look at Mr. Ripley, right? He like just started coming up with wild stories, and he turned it mm. into a book that became world famous, named after him. And then there was fucking whole theme parks and everything. Not theme mm. parks. What would you call it? experience centers ex- ex- exhibitions ex- yeah, yeah experiences yeah yeah i used to think there might well one day be a top flight time machine experience center experience. that yeah. would be amazing and i can straight away think of some of the exhibits and the rides well, there'd be rides as well would there yeah we'll do it soon we'll do a pop-up and see how it goes down i might hear mr try and emulate um crinkly bottom land <laughs> yeah Noel edmonds did <laughs> and then we'll Which... have results spot instead of blobby yeah, and the pop blob. And then people knock uh, at the door like, oh, it's Dave Lee Travis, oh no. No, not the TV show, the oh. theme park. Oh, the theme park, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You can, still, you can still look online and see pictures of it deserted. Yeah. Oh, oh I'd love that, walking. mate. I'd love that. So there's a picture of the very first Believe It or Not cartoon, which was called Champs or Chumps. And there's the chap who walked backwards across the continent... And he's indeed walking backwards and he's holding up a mirror in front of him so we can see what he's walking towards. <laughs> uh, a man who did a running high kick of 10 feet, feet 3 inches, whatever that is, uh, Ed Lammy, who broad jumped on ice, SDC, who hopped 100 yards in 11 seconds. Wow, that's really fast. Hopping. Uh, somebody ran 100 yards backwards in 14 seconds. And somebody jumped the rope, uh, skipped 11,800 times in about four hours. Um, M. Pauliquine in 1912 remained underwater for six minutes, 29 seconds. Hard to believe that that single page illustration has led to us doing this now. Yeah. With the whole believe it or not thing. But there you go. Believe it or not, I believe it. I choose to believe it. Yeah. Have um, you picked anything out other than yeah, the three Yeah, the, 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 the herd eye. Um, the next thing is called Hobbit Life. This is on page 51, yeah. and it's about a peculiar man and his family. Pastry chef Nicholas Gentile has oh, spent the last few years him. leading the life of a hobbit in a diminutive home situated in the Italian countryside. Besides hanging out at the Shire, he mixes it up with peers dressed as Aragon, Legolas, Kim Lee and the rest of the cunts from Lord of the Rings. In perhaps his most <laughs> audacious feat, Nicholas and a Tolkien inspired crew embarked on a 180 mile trek to Mount Vesuvius. Okay. <laughs> Not one to miss an opportunity to emulate Frodo. Nicholas, I never miss an opportunity to emulate Frodo. <laughs> There's and, one thing you can say about me. An imaginary it's... person out of a stupid old book. Nicholas brought along a replica of the One Ring, which he lobbed into the crater. <laughs> good riddance. Then, it, at it the end, it says good riddance. riddance. I don't yeah. know why it says that. Jalapeño. Jalapeño. But this can literally, like, they've got a picture of him, and he's built himself a little hobbit fucking shed rig in the countryside and dressed up as, as Fre- Fredo, is it? Frodo from Frodo Frodo from Lord of the Rings right fine you know each their own Um, so he's living in this rig but the bit that's bad is there's a picture of his kids who don't look they look a little bit weirded out and it's like you can't impose it if that's your lifestyle choice fine but you've got to draw a line at imposing it on the kiddies like kids dad is so into this book 
that he's now going <clears> to <throat> live like the person out of the book that's, full time. Yeah, and, that's checking out of what he regards as regular life. Yeah, and you're going to have to live in this rig as well. And, yeah. and you're going to have to do this pretending game as well, full time like Daddy is. Yeah. Mm. But then he gets a ring and he walks all the way to fucking Mount Vesuvius and lobs a ring into it. 180 mile trek. Why are you go? Where are you going, Vesuvius? How are you getting there? Walking. How far is that then? 180 miles. That'll take a while. Yeah, fucking well. What are you going to do yeah, when you get there? Days. Fucking chuck this ring into the volcano. The then what? Go home. Come back. <laughs> Why are you doing it? Because I've read about it in a book. What? A non fiction book? No, it's a story that some cunt made up in England years ago. <laughs> And there's a, there's a bloke in it who does this. He throws a ring into a volcano. And that's why you're what, doing is it, is real, it? Real? Yeah, did, did, that's, did, that's true. Did that, did that happen in real life? I nah, mean, that's just a story. Nah, it's just a story. It's just some, some cunt made it up. But I'm, do, I'm doing it in real life. I'm yeah. going to be like him. Yeah. What are you going to feel like once it's done? Don't know. Do you think you'll feel fulfilled? Yeah, probably, but I don't know. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I, can't, if I not, probably won't be do it again. Gigantic waste of time, if not, won't it? I'm not going to... I'm not going to like do it like once a year. That would be stupid. Fuck that. Once you've done it, you've done it. What are you going to do then? I don't know. I might switch to a different film. Like I might start pretending to be Keanu Reeves' character out of speed or something like that. (laughs) Might start to be a Transformer. I'm not sure. (laughs) See how I feel. Isn't it it true that you're a pastry chef, Nicholas? Well, yeah, sort of. I dabble in pastry. I don't don't do a lot of it now. There's not not much call for it in the middle of the uh, Italian countryside. Yeah, I mean, if I'm, if I'm really hungry, I might knock myself up a croissant if I've got if I've got the necessary ingredients. But it's quite hard to get um, stuff delivered, <clears> even by Amazon out here, because I haven't even got a postcode. I'm hoping they're going to give me one of those three-word locator thing codes. <laughs> if they do that, then I'll be able to get flour and such and butter and the like delivered Tip here, over. and I might have a chance uh, of making a bit of pastry. But at the I'll moment, set the no. Yeah, I've sent the four bit of the three word people, but they ain't got back to me yet. <laughs> I've actually suggested some of the words that might be included. Obviously, it's up to them, but I think it's fine for me to suggest. And uh, all, all of the words are words out of Lord of the Rings. I suggested Frodo Volcano Ring because <laughs> that's easy for me to remember. But they haven't got back to me yet. <laughs> they're, they're, they must be mulling it over. I, let's say I, I, I am quietly confident, but I think there's probably a backlog because of COVID in that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it not the case where you just get that app and it, there's automatically one no no I don't think that's how it works though. No, you've got to apply for it especially in the countryside because they haven't got that mapped especially if you want to suggest uh, yes. your own words which as I say I very much do <laughs> there's right at the bottom of the page there is what I thought at first was a pie which was a, a nod to his job as a pastry oh, chef yeah. but it's just like it looks like it's a uh, it's like a, a trunk of tree or something or a log. He looks quite hostile in a way, doesn't he? That picture of him with his arm around his kids behind that fence that he's erected yeah. around his hobbit rig. Yeah. He's sort of like, don't <clears throat> take another fucking step or I will break the neck of this child. <laughs> um, I would hope that this isn't the case, but I would imagine that some revelations of this commune would emerge at some point yeah. and they wouldn't be positive ones. No. The, the gang of them in the top picture there with their cloaks and stuff on. Yeah, I don't think... I, it's not It's not a conventional lifestyle or an advisable one. No. And I would say but, uh, that if, if it was someone I knew had got involved in this, I would be a little bit concerned. Would you intervene, do you think? Nah. Have a I, ch- have a I, chat when I was younger, I would have intervened, but now I'm just a bit like, look, mate, you're on your own journey. I can't be asked. I would say, yeah. you're on your own fucking journey. I'm not going to get in and start shouting the odds. But mm. I just want you to know that if and when things go super weird, and I've got to be honest, I think that's going to happen They're sooner gonna, rather than later. Yeah. I'm here for you should you need me. Yeah. Until then, unless good fucking luck. Unless it's super weird to the point of illegality, <laughs> in which case I'll have to have a think. I'll have to have I'm a think. For but, you or not. Yeah, Good luck to you, but don't call me anymore because it'll yeah. weird me out and I've got other shit to be getting on with. 
I've, I've, I've said there. I've just said there. I will be there for you, but I think we both know that I won't be. You should be aware this that in it. a new year, I am getting a new puppy, which will be taking up a huge <laughs> amount of my time. Uh, I, yeah, I've, yeah, that's right. I've already got a kitten. So who am I to judge other people's eccentric lifestyle choices, right? But what I am saying is, with them plus the kids plus all the podcasting I've got to do. It's, it, you know, I'm not going to have much spare time to bail you out of whatever fucking cult you've got yourself involved in. Yeah. So look so, elsewhere. Uh, this is uh, this is it from us. Like, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Hobbit life. It says, and it looks bright and colourful, but I imagine there's an undercurrent of um something quite unpleasant mm. but it, there it is believe it or not do you believe it I choose to believe I, it I believe it I believe it's going on I've just had a quick look on the opposite page um, and there's two little headlines that stand out to me one is called Heroic Rat which we'll mm. have a look at in a minute Yeah. and the other one is Ant Naps oh which very is, interesting I mean obviously we're into ant activity yeah because who isn't can't beat a good ant documentary and we're into naps naps. so this kind of really can but this is perfect we'd get a whole book called ant naps i mean get this 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 is brilliant worker ants take around 250 naps every day but each nap lasts only a minute (laughs) (laughs) hang on 250 minutes how long was that then that's four hours so they do four hours worth of napping. And they put a work put a shift in as well. How many hours do they work? Isn't what, this what seven that, hours? isn't this what Thatcher used to do? Maybe she, that's where she got the idea from. Yeah, because she she didn't sleep during the night, did she? She just she she just did little naps. Ant naps. I've been observing the habits of of ants. I did that during my previous life as a scientist, and I noticed <laughs> that they were extremely productive by simply having two hundred and fifty one minute naps a day. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm into that. I don't know how they figured that out, but it's none of my business. I choose to believe it, obviously. My kitten, uh, by the way, is a um, big napper. Big nap napper. And yeah. what he does is he's a, he's either awake and going mental or he's having yeah. a nap. And when he's going mental, it's sort of annoying, right? But it can be quite mm. entertaining because he does fucking stupid stuff. He climbs up things and falls off and jumps yeah. out and acts generally over dramatic, right? Because <clears throat> he's playing out a fantasy in his head the whole time. Mm. Like he's, Hero fantasy. Yeah, he's constantly having hero fantasies. Like he does this <laughs> thing where like you'll just tap your finger just once or something and he'll crouch down like it's a fucking really scary predator and then he'll very yeah. slowly come forward. And then all of a sudden, he will rear up on his hind legs, right? <laughs> With his, and his eyes will go like mad, like they're on fire. And his top paws will go, and he'll stand fully erect like a human yeah. with his paws up in the air, and he'll go, <laughs> like that. But then he'll just turn around and fucking run off really quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really entertaining. But my favourite is when he has a nap, because then, if I'm lucky, he'll come over and nap on me. So throughout yeah. England, Senegal, he, and we're recording this, by the way, a day after in Senegal, listeners. He, he decided to have nap time. But here was the brilliant, what I call a kitten hack, right? So I'd right. been away for the weekend. And I was like, I need to catch up on some good kitten time, yeah? Mm. And a great kitten hack was, what of it being so fucking cold and energy being so fucking expensive? We've taken to filling hot water bottles, Yeah. Right, and so I I have this hot water bottle, but one of them ones it's got like a woolly jacket, yeah, yeah, and I'd filled it with hot water for the game. Times have changed, let's say, me and my interaction <laughs> with large tournament football. Right, <laughs> I was there with a cup of tea, right, and I had this fucking woolly hot water bottle lying on me, yeah, mm. and the kittens come over. And he was quite being quite playful. And I thought, I hope he fucking calms down for the game because it's distracting. He's so crazy. He jumps on the telly and everything. He's come over. He stepped on to the um, water bottle, felt on his little paws the, yeah. the comfort and warmth. And he yeah. just looked at me, looked down, and he's just, he's lied down, but not like a cat all curled up. He lay down on his back and stretched fully out. 
<laughs> like across <laughs> the water bottle, right? <laughs> and he tipped his he tipped his head right back with his <clears throat> eyes shut. So I would do yeah. that thing. You know, he like they like it when you tickle their sort of windpipe. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The, all cats love that, right? And he's he, stri- he knows that I do that, really. So he's like on his back. It was almost like he'd put his arms behind his... Yeah. You know, like that, his hands behind his back. The, as we yeah. know, we call that the American style, don't we, of sleeping. That's how American sleep, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, all American sleep like that. And it's like, God, this cat must have American blood in him. Because he's fucking, <laughs> he's popped out the American style sleeping position, and then he tips his head right back, and I just like stroke his windpipe gently, and I watched England beat Senegal three 0 and he stayed like that for practically the whole game, mate. Brilliant. And, and the kitten hack there for anyone listening is, you want to get the kitten to calm down and come and give you a really good cuddle, get yourself a hot water bottle because they yeah. fucking love it. But it's gotta be a furry one though. I'm getting, uh, you know, we've got a couple of hot water bottles in the house, but now, because we always talk about investing in the comfort market, right? Yeah. And because of times as they are, that's my new thing, hot water bottles. And I'm actually going online today. Obviously, I'll be going to the John Lewis website first to see which ones they stock, because they'll be the best. And then I'll find a better price elsewhere, which is a Dawson logistical technique that I've picked up from you over the years. And uh, yeah, honestly, mate, hot water bottles are really. We should talk more about them on the free shows because they're really a godsend right now. And they're, I'll they're try and add them to the list. So much comfort, mate. Idea. Picture yourself watching the football with a hot water bottle and a bowl of peanuts and a cup of tea or a beer <sighs> in your oh, case. Comfortable. Can you imagine how nice that is? Oh, yeah. Do you have anything to put yeah. your rest your feet on when you're watching telly in your front room? Yeah, I've got like a footrest, a footstool. Yeah, footstool, me too. I've got too. a sofa and then there's a footstool yeah. that goes with it. So I could have got, I looked at those L-shaped sofas. Oh, yeah. At the end, yeah. you can lounge. Mm, I but used I've to have one of those. Because then you can put the footstool anywhere yeah. along the sofa. I had an L shape and it's quite good if you're on the lounge bit. But if you're on anything other than the lounge bit, often they have quite low backs. So yeah. you're paying the price unless you get the lounge yeah. that, that bit. So I think footstool's much better. But yeah, just look into hot water bottles, mate. They're they're would, really they're, they're like they're old still. school, but in a way, they're like they're a forgotten gem. The classic design. I think they're coming yeah. back. I'm I'm thinking of getting one with a tartan woolen coat oh, over it. Do you know nice. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. The footstool, though, it, it's also it also doubles up as Oscar's podium because <laughs> he sleeps on it sometimes he lies, he lies on it and sleeps on it and also if I'm going to give him a treat when he comes in from the garden after doing toilet time yeah. he always gets two little chicken mini worlds oh, yeah. from B&M yeah. uh, and I get them out of the bag and I always see a podium and he oh. jumps up on his podium <gasps> That's, you've got him well trained mate I mean you know yeah. you, you bad mouth him quite a lot <laughs> I do <laughs> um, but then you reveal something like He's that and I think fucking hell that's really because well, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking just... about dog training now, right? I was at the he's... breeders at the weekend. They were giving me some training tips, and right. I'm thinking that is a well-drilled dog. If you shout podium and he jumps up on the footstool, well, yeah, it's easy because he's getting some fucking treats out of it. You can train a dog to do anything if you give them treats, and especially if they're greedy, as uh, as Oscar is. But yeah, I just say podium and he jumps up on it. Okay. So uh, all right. Well, I've, yeah. maybe in the new year we might do a couple of specials on puppy training and we you can do. you can just give do. me some some tips yeah yeah tell you what we'll leave it there okay uh, there's going to be more ripley's throughout the next few weeks over christmas and we'll we'll start the next episode with heroic rat and find out exactly sure. what that's about because it sounds good so uh thanks for listening everybody and goodbye bye bye <laughs>